So I'll roll back a little bit on that. I'm not completely replacing open a cell, but you'll see the details in a minute. Um, so this talk, I'm going to give a little brief at the start about what we've been doing in the Brussels project over the past like, year. Um, and then I'm going to be talking mostly about this, this new sort of side project called Brussels LibSSL. Um, why we're doing that, what it is, um, and then some technical details about like, how we're achieving it. Um, so yeah, uh, first thing is funding. So as Adolfo mentioned, um, I started Russell's in 2016, so that's eight years ago now. Um, and for the past year, I've been like one of those few people who are fully funded open source maintainers. Scary, um, but really great. Uh, and so there's me and there's also Daniel McCarney, who's another uh, full-time fully funded uh, maintainer of Russell's. Um, and then we've got our third maintainer, uh, Dirkian, who's involved with this conference and s has spoken here in uh, past years about Russell's. Um, and as Adolfo mentioned, we've had some project work as well by him and Ferris um, to do, you know, various um, focused changes to Russell's. Um, so yeah, very good. Uh, very happy with with how this is like turned out over the past eight years. I don't know how that quite happened, but great, why not? Um, so we've been using all this uh, huge amount of suddenly uh, time that we have to catch up with features that people have been asking for for quite a long time, um, especially things like no stub support, which Ferris did a lot of work on, obviously, um, given their background. Uh, the other thing that I think is quite interesting and, and feeds into a lot of future work is this pluggable, pluggable cryptography providers work. So we basically sliced up off the bottom of Russell's. So that top part of Russell's doesn't depend on any particular cryptography library anymore and is pure Rust. Um, and then we take dependencies through create features um, on uh, Ring and AWS LCRS. So you can, if you want, have a completely pure Rust TLS library, but you do have to bring your uh, some uh, make a cho choice of where the cryptography is coming from. Um, there'll be more work on that in the future, I think, from not just us. Um, so, yeah. Um, so n n now I look a bit stupid, ro rolling back on. Uh, replacing open cell, but we're going to do it bit by bit. Um, and this is the first bit, I think, a, a small sliver of the first bit. Um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The reason we're doing this is I think we've done quite a good job of giving, uh, implementing TLS in Rust for Rust people. Um, but slightly less of a good job about taking that good work and make it usable for people who aren't rewriting everything in Rust. Um, and so this is an effort to do better at that. Um, the other thing to say is there is like a big problem in computing generally um, with memory safety. And if we can sort out that in small parts rather than huge parts. So what I mean by huge parts is throw everything away, all your software away and rewrite everything in Rust or throw all your hardware away and uh, ARM and Intel would like you to do this and get things like uh, memory tagging and an ever increasing number of new CPU silicon features. Uh, replace all your, all your hardware, throw it in the landfill, buy new computers. Um, I don't think that either of those are very tenable, although in this room, I know what most people would choose. Um, so yeah, um, 
I want to give a big shout out to this. I love this graph. This is this brings me joy. Um, so this is the UUtils project, uh, rewriting GNU core utils in Rust. And not only that, running the GNU test suite for core utils against their code. So the, the nice part of this graph is the green up and to the right. That's beautiful. Um, so unfortunately, to understand this talk, you have to know a little bit about how OpenSSL works. And I really apologize for putting this in your brain if it's not already there. Um, but important things is uh, OpenSSL builds two libraries, libssl, libcrypto. Um, invariably, if your application uses TLS, uses OpenSSL for TLS, you end up linking to both of these. Um, there's no way around it. You end up with both. Um, but you can, if you don't use TLS, you can just use libcrypto for, for other things like, well, whatever you want. Um, in almost all cases, OpenSSL is dynamically linked against your program. Um, that is generally for uh, replaceability aspects. So there's a vulnerability in libssl. <clears throat> um, you just replace this. You don't need to come and relink or recompile the application. So this is a little bit different to how most Rust uh, applications are deployed, but um, that is how it's done. That's how, that's the will in which we have to work. Um, and so that brings us to um, a missing emoji, uh, which is meant to be uh, scissors, but whatever. Um, basically, we can chop this out, right? So what do we need to do? Well, we need to implement this interface, which is the libssl API or ABI, if you want to be really specific. And we need to implement this interface because uh, one of the things in libcrypto is like error reporting. So when something goes wrong in OpenSSL, there's an error reporting API in libcrypto. And you basically say, this went wrong. Here's the line number information. It's like, you know, build your own backtrace sort of thing. And an application will then go to libcrypto and say, I just got told there was an error. Please tell me about the error. And if that information is missing, then you haven't done a very good job about uh, of replacing Libus cell. This is the next problem. Um, Libus cell is huge. Um, wow, I can actually read that. I didn't expect to be able to read this, um, but I imagine no one else can. Um, so 522 functions. Um, it's actually worse than that because this is OpenSSL 3.0 and now it's 585 in the latest one. So it's, it's growing and it will continue to grow basically forever, I think. Um, oh, God. Um, uh, the, but there, there's more, right? Because that's not all the functions that people might call. Uh, and again, I'm going to apologize for showing you some C preprocessor. Um, if you don't know CPU processor, this is a function which looks like a function but isn't. It gets replaced by the CPU processor to this expression, which calls a different function with a bunch of fixed and variable arguments. Um, and there's 136 of those. So there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things that we need to write. But fortunately, there's a, that is a long tail of, of unused, weird stuff. Um, and if you, if you have some focus and say, we want to target curl, we want to target nginx, which is exactly what we've done, then you end up with this short list of, you know, this is doable. Um, this is some functions we can write functions. Great. Uh, yeah. Nginx, if, if you choose both. 114, that's, that's, a, that's a couple of months work. As it happens, we've, we've implemented 132 right now, but you know, um, that doesn't seem very interesting. 
the, the, the main the main thing that you should take away from this is this is not a complete replacement for liver cell. You cannot take any arbitrary lib SSL using uh, program, slide this underneath it and have it work. But what we're doing is basically incrementally qualifying individual things. So at the moment we've got curl and nginx um, on a particular version of Ubuntu, uh, lace stale release, uh, do another release of this, which will add Ubuntu 24 um, for nginx. Um, so that, that's how we're attacking the problem, not trying to attack the entire pro entirety of that problem by writing 700 odd functions all at once. Um, so this is the like rewrite it in Rust part of the talk. Um, and so what do we need to do? We need to write um, a, a new dynamic library and we can do that. We can just put that in our cargo tunnel and it works. Oh, that was easy. Uh, the next thing is not so easy. We need um, symbol versioning. So this is quite annoying. Um, OpenSSL uses symbol versioning. So when you load a dynamic library, you usually look up things by name. Symbol versioning adds a new dimension to that, a version. And that the intended idea is that you can um, evolve your ABI over time by just having different versions. Um, but we need to do that because the dynamic linker complains if your application thinks it wants this version and it gets a different version. And this is annoying because the standard way is you give a linker version script to the linker, which we can do. Um, and let's type it here, LDD, that should be LLD, that the LLVM linker, that's what we have to use. The annoying thing is uh, Rust-C uses uh, the the linker version script for itself and doesn't re-expose that. So you can't tell it what version a symbol should be. You basically have to do it after the fact. Um, using LLD fixes that because it's happy to accept two, uh, well, more than one uh, linker version scripts. So that all works. Um, and how it works is in our Rust, we define the symbol like underscore SSL connect. In our linker version script, we define a cell connect with that version. And then we also tell the linker that these two symbols are the same. Um, and yeah, that, that works. That was um, a little bit of hard one um, knowledge from various people. It's not original. So, um, and that is what is this build RS is doing. Um, so the next thing, well, we can write some functions. Um, and we want to write hundreds of these functions. So um, macros to the rescue. Uh, and I'm not going to show you the innards of these macros. I think that would be cruel and unusual. But suffice to say, we have a function. We, we have a file with hundreds of these in. And um, it basically decorates this function, which looks like a Rust function, but actually it's no mangle and it externs C. The other thing that is important is if a panic happens in our Rust code here, we have to make sure that doesn't uh, bubble up into the C code because that is undefined behavior and everything will go really badly wrong in a confusing and like uncontrolled way. So it also wraps the whole of the, the, this function body in catch unwind and then does a bunch of things it tells the error handling mechanism that i was talking about earlier that this happened and then it returns a null pointer in this case so we just have a, like an error type that knows how to be converted into a bunch of um c return types uh yeah so now i want to talk about um testing um, that this is uh, this isn't isn't again isn't new work. This is a, like a thing um, that has a Wikipedia page and everything. Um, but I think I like it. It's nice. It's cheap. It is 
uh, cheap. Did I say cheap? Really cheap. So basically you write a whole load of C programs and you call the function that you're interested in. In this case, two functions at the same time because they do the same thing really. Um, and these functions take an int and they're only usable whether an int is between zero and 255. So we obviously check from minus one to 260, why not? Um, it just prints all the, prints all the output. Um, you know, what, what is this getting towards Joe? Um, well, that's what the output looks like. And then we run it against the real openness cell and our thing. And you probably see where this is going now. Um, they should be identical and you don't need to do this with very simple, um, functions like that. The most important thing is that the output is deterministic. Um, so you really must, uh, well, I'll try it. You, they, they cannot print the time. You cannot print any like encrypted data. Um, it, yeah. Um, and that is a bit annoying. Uh, also you can't have like, um, non-deterministic data structures determining the output. Um, but one thing to say is that OpenSSL has quite a lot of callback based APIs, making sure that those callbacks are called at the right time, um, with respect to other functions is pretty important because that's what people expect. Well, that's what their programs expect. Um, and this basically linearizes linearizes, I'm, afraid, I'm sorry, um, the program flow with respect to uh, what functions are called and what functions were called by the cell, um, as long as you just print out where everything happens. Um, so yeah, that's good. Um, the other thing to talk about is MIRI. So obviously when you're writing unsafe Rust, you probably use MIRI. And if you don't know what MIRI is, it's like an interpreter for uh, the Rust compiler's internal representation or one of the internal representations. Um, but it cannot work if you make an FFI call. And that is because in an FFI call, there is no Rust internal representation of all the binary code in libcrypto. It doesn't exist, it won't ever exist, it cannot exist. Um, and so it gives you this error. This is a great error. I love this um, typical of Rust errors, right? What's gone wrong, where it's gone wrong, what to do about it. Oh, beautiful. Um, but at this point I'm thinking I am absolutely perfectly capable and willing to write a dodgy version of X5 and store new. Please let me do that, Miri. Please let me do that. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to go, I'm going to send Miri people a pull request adding this. It will be great. This is such a great idea. Um, and so I go and find where this error comes from. And I find uh, the code leading up to that, which is like symbol resolution. You've got this X5, X509 store new and you want to know what to do with it. Um, and I find the code's already there and it actually already works. So all you do is you write your slightly dodgy X509 store new. So to be clear, this isn't, this isn't the code we ship. This is just, um, support infrastructure to run a different test. And what this different test needs is to be able to get a unique non poly pointer, non null pointer from X509 store new, and then later on pass it to free and have that work and not produce any um, Miri warnings by itself. Um, so yeah, that was, I just wanted to say that because I didn't find that and I had to go look in the code. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. Um, so, uh, what have we done? We've made a memory safe, mostly, uh, replacement for open cell. Three, 
uh, lib SSL. So that's like half ish of the project. Um, mostly is doing a bit of heavy lifting. Um, obviously it's a C API. So if you call a function with, uh, that takes a pointer with the pointer one, two, three, four, five, it's not going to work well. Um, you cannot possibly fix that. You can't have memory safety from that level, but everything below that, everything that is reading network traffic and stuff is memory safe. Um, and oh, well, obviously, yeah. Oh, um, you don't need to recompile applications. You can just try it. Uh, oh, you'll see on the next slide, um, and see how it works for you. Um, and yeah, it's a small subset of the Libus cell API at the moment. Um, but I think it will, it will grow over time, um, and support more applications. Uh, and yeah, it's quite easy to try. So we, we have a, a package that you can install on Ubuntu or Debian. Um, right now, uh, probably more packaging to come. Uh, it comes with a couple of handy scripts, like with Russell's SSL, which just runs a subprocess and fiddles with the blinker settings as it does that. So that's how you can run curl. Uh, and another little helper, which fiddles around with Nginx's systemd um, configuration to make it use this rather than the main system thing. So when you install that package, it doesn't overwrite the openness cell one. You have to kind of opt in on an application by application basis to say use this by fiddling with uh, linker parameters. Right, that is it. Hello, hello. Thank you so much. And now it's time for questions. Who has a question? There. And somebody, ah, there is a mic right there. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. The focus of your talk seemed to be mostly on the FFI. Were you actually rewriting all the functionality that's in libssl? Or are you using existing crates from the Rust ecosystem? Um, so a lot of it is just kind of um, converting between uh, OpenSSL's view of the world and Russell's. So, you know, um, OpenSSL's got its own idea about what a cipher suite might be. So we have a type which represents that. Um, but inside, that basically refers to a Russell's type. Um, that's not a per it's not a perfect match. Um, so if you know the Russell's API, there's this, this config object. Um, I think our documentation says like, try not to make a lot of these. We make, in this project, we make one per connection because the um, configuration is quite late in the um, OpenSSL API. You can like basically call things in any order you like. Um, and then when you finally connect, that's when it's set in stone, but there's no, there's nothing like that in the, in the Russell's API. So um, we are using some other uh, ecosystem traits, uh, traits? Crates, so I've got Ross on the mind. Um, uh, like uh, OpenSSL Probe, which tells you where the standard locations that OpenSSL looks for, for the certificates and stuff. Um, but yeah, mostly it's a semi-direct uh, glue between Russell's world and OpenSSL world. Luis, oh, more questions? Um, that person next to you, right, right there. Thank you. Um, I had a question to you. How does your library work together with libcrypto? That is a very good question. So at the moment, it's not ideal. Um, so we're not using libcrypto for crypto. Instead, we're shipping a libssl, which contains a different libcrypto. Um, we plan the future to have as a separate crate um, a Russell's crypto provider, which calls down into a lib crypto and then, um, wrap those both up so that you get a, a more like obvious, uh, a, 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 well, not obvious, 
a less surprising um, thing so you don't end up with your lib SSL holding loads of crypto. Um, also, that would be quite useful to other users, I think. Uh, say, if you want to make use of OpenSSL's FIP certificate, then you'll be able to use that to to do that. All right. Have we got time for lots more questions? There we go. Um, did you find memory leaks bugs in uh, OpenSSL itself while re-implementing it? Now you put me on the spot. Um, yes, but it's in, I mean, in process with open cell about that. So I can't really talk about it, <laughs> which is a shame because it'd be nice to come and say, oh, we replaced loads of stuff with memory safety. And by the way, while we were doing it, all the wheels came off, but, um, the time didn't work out. So. All right. More questions over here? Yes. All the way in the back over there. Ah, running. <laughs> you can't be with step you can't twist. No, no, hang on. Otherwise, they, we won't be able to record it. Does Debian have plans to make Rust TLS the default provider? I can't talk for Debian, I'm afraid. But, um, I mean, I know they package it, uh, and that's one step along the way. I'd hope they might package this as well. And then maybe you could have, like, um, I forget what the package uh, selections or whatever it's called, uh, where the system maintains a bunch of sim links and you can choose as a user which libs cell you want. Update alternatives. So that would be quite nice. Thank you. You're right. And well, yes, over here in the front. Oh, oh no, wait, hang on. Wait, the, 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 <laughs> if you go there, then it's logistically easier. I'll get to you. Okay. Look at it. Yeah, the, um, the entry macro, uh, is it something that's generalizable between like different grades or is it something specific that to uh, open SSL? So. I would say it's quite specific, um, basically because of the error type, it, it makes errors and those errors know how to be inserted into the open SSL error stack. Yeah, that, that seems quite obvious, but on the other hand, it, it's like five lines of macro, maybe 10, because I think it has to deal with functions without a return type. It makes it really annoying. But yeah, please, please steal it if you find it useful. Thank you. And then there was a question here in the front. I'm sorry, I'm making you run all over the place. Ash, there we go. Um, oh. Um, can this be a basis for having Rust TLS be self dynamically linked for programs using Rust TLS? Or is, uh, are there lessons you've learned for, for the. So, we actually have another project called Russell's FFI. Um, and that is a better C API to Russell's. Um, and, well, confusingly, um, there is, a, in curl, for example, you can choose to build with Rust, Russell's as it's TLS under thing. And that uses Russell's FFI because obviously curl's all written in C. Um, and that is a, uh, a CA, a CABI as well. So you can dynamically link that if you want to do that. All right. Anyone else? No, ah, over there. Excellent. So, excuse me, are there any performance implications for this sort of translation between, you know, the, the C ABI and particularly, I suppose, the ABI, API that uh, OpenSSL expects and kind of Russell's internal stuff? That's a good question. We haven't actually mentioned uh, measured performance um, in a meaningful way yet. Um, I don't think there should be a big difference. Um, at the minute, Russell's and OpenSSL are roughly on par in terms of performance. Um, there will, at some point, be a little bit of performance degradation because we're going to start using some of some more of the APIs in libcrypto for stuff like 
um, maintaining list of tr trusted certificates and stuff. At the moment, we don't use any of that, which is a bit of a defect because um, you can just go and add a load of certificates to an object that our library is completely ignoring. Um, so uh, that will involve a little bit of conversion overhead for every certificate um, validation. That may or may not be visible in performance benchmarks. I guess we'll, we will see. All right. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. Ah, there's a question here. Actually, I also have a question myself, but I don't want to block anyone in the audience. So, otherwise, I'll just ask you later. So, um, you mentioned the goal is kind of to replace OpenSSL for crates uh, for um, applications like Nginx and curl. Is there kind of a path forward to, uh, in in practice, in Linux distros, replace OpenSSL uh, with uh, this crate for those applications, or is the idea to kind of finish? the uh the implementation first and then replace it wholesale oh so okay. kind of the, my question kind of is what's the path forward for replacing open ssl in practice yeah um i think probably well there's a lot of old things in open ssl i think if there is uh, like I mentioned, there's a, this long tail of, of their API. What I'm not sure about is whether there's a long tail of people who rely on those things. If there is, that's going to be more difficult for abs absolutely getting rid of openness self for good. But you can kind of imagine a, a situation where, um, you know, already someone shipped a product that I, I know about, which is a Linux distribution which uses curl built against Russell's. For those more kind of limited um, applications where you control a lot more and you don't have users wanting to install this old bit of software, um, then it's much more doable. Um, so having it as an option in those sort of circumstances is a good start. I think then building up more applications that support this is probably the direction we're going to go with rather than aiming for completeness. Thank you, right. So, um, if I may, uh, the question I had was, did you actively aspire to be like a fully funded open source maintainer? And when that came across your path, like, was it, was it like a hard choice? Like I'm giving up something stable and who knows how long this will actually, how did that come about? And, and is it something you would advise everyone to sort of aspire to if they have the chance? Yeah. Um, I would like to say if there was some sort of trick, but there really wasn't. It was very accidental and um, lucky, I think. And um, yeah, the, the offer was on the table there for a little while while I was still working at um, a big tech company. Uh, but yeah, eventually it just became too... Um, too desirable to like just go and do my own thing but to be honest i was doing anyway mostly in my spare time so like why wouldn't yeah you? thank you so much thanks again we have a gift for you Adolfo.